Hello again, horror addicts. I'm Tristan Battistella, aka KBATS. Once again, I have managed to find the most warped, most awkward angle to film in this room, but I did want to show briefly a little bit of the top of the curtain, if I could. Um, this was the last thing to be done in the room. The room is finished. There always seems to be one little thing in a project that tends to hold me up. <laughs> I still haven't done the lampshade trim in the basement project, and this was the last thing that seemingly seemed that it would be simple. Oh, I can just hang up the closet curtain. That will be no problem. I should have done it for myself before, and I didn't, and it's quite easy, and it took a little more work than expected. Um, I had what was in the room, which was just your standard white curtain rod and um, just the brackets on the sides. And, and once again, I, I think at some point this closet may have actually been enlarged for, through the course of the house. There actually is um, an old cable and phone wire connection that comes through here. And when I tried um, drilling, um, about an inch away from the top when I realized I needed a little uh, center support hook, I um, was hitting some of that, not a stud as I expected in traditional wood frame, but again, I was hitting that, you know, kind of weird aluminum kind of metal kind of brace in there. So this closet is actually quite large inside. The inset goes all the way to the door, all the way to the wall, and there is a shelf inside and then it's open up to the ceiling. So there's plenty of space in here. And I got my rod together, but at first the pin tuck curtain was actually too heavy for that. And well, mom's gonna be here this weekend. So I couldn't exactly, again, in the middle of the virus, go run to any of the regular department stores or go searching for a particularly fancy store to find the right kind of rod that fits the pin tuck kind of clips. And nowadays, even from Prime, there's not necessarily any, you know, two day shipping kind of guarantee. So, and even so for, I, I have other curtain rods that were larger, rounder rods that these did not fit and they were 50 or $60 kind of rods. So you could spend a lot and then maybe, maybe it still wouldn't be the right thing. And, you know, the thin white kind of regular rail ones, depending on small or large sizes, I think they're around $10. So I had what was here and I was going to make what was here work. So the regular brackets are on the sides, but then in the middle, I needed to add a regular support bracket, <laughs> um, but upside down <laughs> using the kind of uh, balance um, little screw that's usually in there when you're working with one of the round rods. That's now screwing into one of the, the white lips <laughs> in the, the regular rod. So somehow, I got it all up there, and um, now it's staying there. <laughs> That's it. Who cares? It's there, whether they, whether somebody likes it or not. And you know, my father, again, will probably make a joke about being who's short or who's tall, but I did hang it an inch higher, and um, so therefore it's actually not touching the floor. Um, and when I... Um, open the seam on this curtain, I actually saw that there's actually quite a good bit of hem material. Actually, you can almost see because of the light here where, I don't know, it's like, I don't know, five or so inches at least of this. So if I actually undid these hems, maybe just to a smaller inch, they actually really would have that classic old fashioned kind of dramatic where not only does your curtain graze the floor, but actually slightly puddles on the floor. That's actually supposed to be a nice artistic design. But again, baby, kids, dogs, I really did not want, you know, anything more of trip or even the seniors that would be here, something of trip and cumbersome. So I hung it slightly higher and let it hang above. And depending on 
be angle here. Oh, and the sun has set, so actually it looks kind of dark and spooky in there, even though I had the lights on. I didn't mean for that to be scary for baby. That's not scary. This is a nice baby zone. Um, if you can kind of see, um, I was glad that there was already a seam on these curtains. I thought, great, I don't have to make a seam. But it turns out that the seam on this long curtain wasn't centered. <laughs> so there actually is more fabric on this side than there is on that side. So I kind of, I centered the fabric on the rod as best I could, and I had to adjust that. And then I had to adjust the way I was kind of swagging the material inside. I have just, instead of small J hooks, I actually have oversized J hooks that are just here on the inset, just as a quick kind of pin back. And I don't think that it'll maybe always stay this kind of dramatically opened. I just want that to be the sort of wow frame for the baby carriage. But um, because I also got excited myself once there was a curtain, I just thought this is going to be a great place <laughs> for the kids to have little puppet shows and put on all kinds of little theater. And, you know, maybe when, you know, this baby gets to being in that nice kind of terrible toddler age, you know, I think she may really like actually having a little private little alcove to herself where she could have a little, not as drab as little Harry Potter under the cupboard, but just a little sort of play place for herself. And as I said, you can actually still have curtain rod hanging here on either side or these nice little tote bins with all the toys and accessories could go in and out of the closet and there's still enough room this actually could wheel fits actually all the way inside um, so again I love that there is mobility and options for for space and storage and growth that applies to all the guests that might be here um, so I hope that works out. I hope that looks nice. And I've been calling this a Victorian guest room. And so you start with what's your main ideals of a sort of style, but then between seniors and baby and its guests and budget, there comes a time where you kind of, again, like the basement project, it seems like the word of, of the hour is compromise about what you can and can't do. And so using what I've already had, I've tried to make just a few choice statement pieces. So I have the dramatic bed curtain, I have the dramatic closet curtain, and I have the, the black uh, frame of the bed and of the changing table. And that kind of brings, maybe to someone, maybe it's not necessarily Victorian. I tend to think it's Victorian because I, that's how I would match the rest of my house. But maybe it just seems, a little more classy or just old-fashioned traditional um, and to me that that's fine I mean if there is some kind of warm and comfort like a bed and breakfast looking out at the the forest kind of feeling that's fine um, because compared to when I first started looking at baby things I mean goodness gracious stuff looked like it belonged on spaceships everything was 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 gray or, or plastic and, and, and seemingly harsh and and high-tech and and in, those little baby jumper kind of little seat rocker things. I mean, we're practically like vertical where you just strap the kid in and they look like they were on Gravitron. One last thing, horror addicts, I did want to mention that although I have this side of the closet sort of hanging rod free, I do actually up on the shelf, I do have a few Christmas things um, that uh, probably I hope I don't forget about come Christmas time. But on this side of the rod, I actually still have my costumes hanging. They were hanging in here when I had everything in my craft storage. And um, I mentioned previously in um, talking when you can't see me, um, this is, this is going to be a lot of fun, let me tell you. I do have to admit. Um, I mentioned, um, no, not my gothic alterations video. In my uh, Victorian video, when I was talking about um, the bonnet and the cape, 
how I had previously made some costumes for when my nieces were little. And I said, oh, I should have gotten them out. So um, when I cleaned out the closet, I said, well, I do still need the hanging space in here for them. So I kept them in here. So obviously in a few years, this new little baby girl can have a few princess play clues. Um, this purple, I got a, um, I remember buying the bowl at the time and I had two nieces to dress princess. So one um, was a little more into uh, spooky things, Nightmare Before Christmas and such. So she got the more simplistic, more magician kind of purple and black, but my taller princess, princess niece. Um, <laughs> and these are things that I remember finding. Um, this thing was like some little craft, little remnant for a couple dollars. And the gold that's on that one and this one had been a tablecloth. And as my niece got bigger and taller, well, then I just started making the little, um, gore panel sort of slit up the side and a little gore panel sort of slit in the back and um just because kids are going to play and make mess and this one i even got apparently a matching pouch and as i said i always put bells on their things just so i could hear where little girls were going and what they were doing and this red here, I recall. If you can see it, it's that nice kind of crushed velvet kind of 90s. It came from a dress that I had that I think at one point got too small. So this one became just sort of a pseudo medieval kind of combination kind of little gown. And <laughs> I had some little, little white little undershirt apparently that went with one of them. And I've got more capes and all kinds of loony costumes back here so um <laughs> now i think it's really cute of like oh good somebody new is going to get some little play fun time wear out of these little dresses but then i think when the time comes i'll probably be like no 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 you can't get this dirty you can't ruin this i'm too sentimental <laughs> but um <laughs> So I wanted to show you just for some of the little sewers out there. And again, this was obviously sewing that didn't have to be perfect, but just, you know, basic little tunic shape for, for a little girl that could be kind of altered or opened up as needed. And then just with, you know, a basic uh, cuff collar and, and hem is really all you need for, for some kind of little girl fancy. So, um, and as I said, I think this, this curtain is, is half the, uh, you know, I'm not going to quote Romeo and Juliet, I promise. I've got the costume, costumes in here to do so, but I won't. Maybe. Just a few more touches around the room. I did put this door knocker on the door. I already had a nail there. I had a sign that said vampire on duty for the craft studio. Um, and this was a knocker actually for $4 at Goodwill, which I intended to put on my front door, but I like putting wreaths on my front door. So I thought that that might just be something polite, you know, for guests, you know, when I'm to knock on the door, I don't know if it'll end up being noisy or a problem for baby. We'll see. <laughs> um, I did also initially have this wind chime, <laughs> um, but again, I kind of thought maybe it might be kind of obnoxious to some folks. And I've had this different um, sort of hanging kind of hook wood piece for, for quite a while. I initially got it um, when we, uh, before we moved here in our previous house. And um, it took me such a long, difficult time to find one that didn't have, you know, hearts and cute country little swirls and designs. So I have really hung on to this guy. <laughs> um, sorry, the lighting here at night is a little, little difficult. Um, so I actually previously was hanging my different jewelry beads on it, but again, I decided to leave it in the room just to, you know, 
hang a different coat or, or purse or backpack or, or something. And um, I also had a Golden Girls, um, if you can kind of see it there, I had a Golden Girls calendar that I just had to, um, again, some of the folks here, we all kind of can quote that to each other, scarily enough. So that's just another funny little haha, -ha. and some little mementos and more pillows. That little neck pillow was again, um, I had elsewhere downstairs in the pile of, no, maybe it was in the pile in the bean bag with the bean bag pillows. So again, maybe I thought that would be more comfortable. And the finished bed, oh, sorry, there's lighting. The finished bed and the sort of dramatic curtainry. Wow, my lighting. And um, there's the Bob Ross prints <laughs> up there. Um, I did sort of a, a spring, a summer, and a winter, but not a fall. <laughs> um, because the fall of St. Olaf hasn't happened yet. Sorry. <laughs> and um, I've, of course, strategically set out, you know, all the fancy little bells and whistles and toys and, and everything for baby to be. Um, I do have, sorry, shaky cam, the hamper here that I made, if you can momentarily see. Um, it was just the, the square of the the navy sheet that I'm totally getting use out of this goofy navy sheet that got damaged. Um, I didn't have um, any good twine actually to do it with a hefty kind of drawstring so I actually just braided some yarn that I had together. But again, I mean it's really just for, you know, soil baby linens. I mean who cares if something happens to it. Um, so just trying to utilize things efficiently um, in the room, I hope. and. Um, I believe I briefly showed the inside of the carriage before, but um, the exterior sort of bumper lining is glued. And then the pad on the center um, is actually just sort of nice squeeze nestled in, but that can come in and out, you know, and I have other sort of changing pads and sheets and things, you know, because you just expect it to need to be cleaned and such. So, um, there's the baby carriage, <laughs> and um, there's the whole lighting, the whole sort of dramatic kind of closet to reveal. Sorry if this light is quite problematic, if I should say. Um, I got this light because I did need more light in the studio space. And again, I wanted something that was slightly classy. Um, so I got this multi-light, the two kind of little child globes can move around for different, I was using them for different spotlights for my uh, filming, but, um, and there's different, you know, three way off on one or the other. So again, you could have the light off on one side or um, have light on baby or have something shining for, you know, the kids, you know, drawing on the floor. Um, and I did just put the dogwood kind of vine around it. Um, again, that's kind of, I had dogwood growing up in my parents' house. So I reused one of these vines that I had here um, because it, this wasn't black. It's that sort of aged bronze, but I wanted to bring maybe a little bit more white to this sort of corner. Um, which is really, again, kind of a movement kind of corner. And I have this, I've just been using it as a little decorative trash can. Um, it was given to me. Um, and it was like a cute country quaint kind of little blue or something, flowers and hearts. And um, that was just not for me. So I painted it to being a, a sort of spooky little red and black little gothic looking little girl. And instead of her holding like a, a butter churn or, or maybe a broom. I feel like it looks like she is kind of uh, stirring up some, some brew. <laughs> so I just left that in here. I thought that matched the room just as a little casual. Obviously there's probably going to be um, the need for something more diaper friendly. <laughs>